Artists are leaders in their communities in fighting for their rights and the rights of all. They build artist-run spaces, organizing themselves to ensure they receive proper funding for their work and advocating for the important role the arts play in society. Examples of how artists are speaking for themselves and putting forward their demands include local Mayworks projects, artist-run centres like Artsite Inc. in Windsor, Ontario, as well as 110 Park, also in Windsor, Ontario. In this interview, we're discussing how artists create their own spaces where they can organize, hold showings, discuss art, culture, and politics with Mary Joyce, an award-winning printmaker, drawer, teacher, organizer, and painter who has been producing and exhibiting art in Canada uh, and in Europe since 1986. Mary, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure. I'm happy to be here. So can you talk a little about a little bit about artist run centers, the context for why they began and, and kind of why they were needed at the time? My experience, uh, yes, my experience goes back to the early 70s. I was uh, then uh, a student at University of Alberta in Edmonton doing my BFA. And I kept hearing, uh, I kept hearing excited rumors about a new uh, venue for artists called Latitude 53. Uh, at, as you might know, Edmonton is on Latitude 53, one of the most northern cities. So that was a point of pride. Latitude 53, uh, we think here that it was the first artist run centre in Canada, but that has to be verified. Anyhow, it was set up by a, a couple of um, rebels guys of uh, Sylvain Voyer and Harry Savage in about, I think it was 1971, maybe 70. They've got an old house near the campus and um, they set up what, they set up a, a gallery to be run by the artists that were involved with the gallery um, and to be run as a nonprofit and to be run so that artists could show their work. Whether or not their work appealed to um, some of any of the commercial galleries in town. So it was a it was a way of saying that not all art um, not all art is, is like the landscape or still life. Um, there's art that talks about social issues, that talks about people's people's involvement in uh, bettering their lives. It talks about um, personal issues, um, talks about all kinds of things, environmental issues, issues of uh, justice and fairness for all. Yeah, so that, that started and that continued. It was run by a, artist run centers have um, sort of have some rules and they are set up they probably were initiated by the artists, let's hope they were, but they were taken out by the granting agencies. So I'll talk about that in a minute. But the rules have to do with uh, that there needs to be a, a board a composed of artists and the board has to have committees. Um, one of the most important ones we used to think was the selection committee, uh, the committee that decided who got to show, mm -hmm. right? Who got shows, that was important. And there's usually quite a lot of uh, passionate discussion about that. Um, and then there was um, a committee that decided who would actually do the day-to-day -day running of the gallery, the, be the uh, executive director, open the doors, make sure everything was working well, hire whatever other staff is necessary, um, hang the shows, um, pay the artists, uh, and... Um, Pre prepare catalogs or other forms of information about the work and also in the end in the end or in the in as we carried on it was a question of keeping archives mm. so um and that's really important so um now about funding i don't know what the funding was when we started i don't know how how the money was you know because you have to pay the rent, you have to pay the people that do the work and you have to pay the artists. And that was something that, yeah, I wanted to talk about that. It was through the artist run centers that artists presented their 
a demand that that they should get paid when their work was shown mm. and uh, and so you knew that if you got a show if you were lucky enough to get a show at an artist run center then you would get at least some kind of small fee that would maybe cover possibly your framing costs or maybe mm. the cost of getting the transporting the work to the gallery um <laughs> And it, it was, um, but it, it was nice. It was significant in the way that it made you, you know, you felt like you were recognized mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was good. And um, so many of, I think many of Canada's important artists have come through the Artist Run Centre. They've started there. Um, and it's, it's very, it was a very important, everyone will say this, every, it's a very important network uh, that through which people got started on their careers because usually um, it seems to me from observing everything is that people would start in the artist run centers they would start showing there and often they continue for some time but then the next jump is to to public galleries mm -hmm. uh, so you know this this the galleries that are in each town each city um and um, that would be a that would be a kind of trajectory. After that, you might you you know uh, some of the artists did go to commercial galleries as a kind of um, safety place where they could sell occasionally, sell some pieces. But um, yeah, a lot of the, the artists that have something to say, uh, aside from admiring the landscape uh, or um, creating beautiful still lives and so on. They have come through the artist run centers. So the funding, the other thing is about the funding. Uh, usually there's three levels. There's the, there's federal and provincial and municipal as in many other areas of life. So the Canada Council took up the funding of artist run centers and that's where many of these rules uh, are expressed is, is through that. and. One of the biggest jobs the administrators have each year there is to fill out the, the grant form to the Canada Council and get the funding hmm. uh, for the gallery to continue. In Edmonton, we have Latitude 53. We have the SNAP, the Society for Northern Alberta Print Artists. It's a very important artist-run centre. I could tell you quite a lot about it. I, I've been involved with it from the beginning. Um, SNAP began in about 80, 1983, 82-83. A group of printmakers decided they would get together and make a place, a public place at for, for doing prints. And uh, that came out of the university having a really active and lively uh, printmaking department. Hmm. Um, in the in the visual arts and uh it some of the graduates from that department had been for years searching for spots in town like amongst the old warehouses and so on downtown finally uh so a group of people found a place in an old army and navy warehouse that was in our downtown and they decided that i should say we we decided that uh it would be a sensible thing to use the, the fifth floor the top floor to make us like a, a workshop, but also that uh, we would fund it by making individual artist studios uh, on the rest of the floor and in, in a lower floor. Hmm. And that we'd start by building it all. So that's what we did. A, a bunch of people got together with, you know, construction materials and we, we were able to rent this place. It was, was derelict. And uh, we, we rented it from a, a really nice guy who had a soft spot for art. And, uh, and it worked. It worked. Uh, slowly, each floor of the building was made uh, to have artist studios. It was, they were subdivided, right? So, so people brought in their two-by-fours and everything and built these cubicles and people got... Um, yeah, they got spaces to work. So coming straight out of their art training, then they could they could rent a space. It wasn't too expensive. 
And then the rents went into the expenses of running SNAP. Hmm. We all call it SNAP. And then after a year, some years, uh, it turned out that Lab 253 moved into the main floor and, and built a beautiful big um, exhibition space there. So there were lots of um, cooperation, cooperating things going on there. Um, and SNAP has continued to be very active over all these years. They've moved several times. Um, they have quite a big infrastructure now. They have, um, they have a director, they have a beautiful shop, they have studios that individual artists can, can rent uh, to, to use most of the time, all the time, you know, on their own, as well as doing communal printing in the shop. So mm. sharing the presses and sharing um, the other equipment and and they have uh, of course uh, various boards and committees that run everything and make all the decisions so it's a it's a really successful example of an artist run space having those spaces where, where artists can actually um, express without having to you know, feel like everything has to be commercialized, especially in our society where everything that's like your, that's your standard that you should aspire to, that if somebody's going to buy your art, then that somehow justifies how significant or important it is. Whereas the fights for social change um, aren't necessarily profit making, but they're extremely important. Um, and having those artist run spaces to be able to express um, those, those ideas and, and that form of art, um, I think is really, really important. So thank you very much for, for coming on and talking to us about the importance of artist run centers and, and kind of a bit of that history. Oh, you're very welcome.